Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Welcome to the Sunday lecture of uh, Radha Govinda Mandi, New York, New York is gone. So today we have uh, His Holiness Bhakti Rasayan Sagaswami enlighten us with the lecture on a really relevant topic. So Maharaj, maybe you, you will say what the topic of the uh, lecture will be and uh, why did you choose this topic? Because uh, I think this is should be something that everybody is thinking now and everybody is concerned about. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Giridari Sharan Prabhu. Uh, yes, the topic is dealing with uh, frustration, saturation, and boredom in Krishna consciousness. And uh, yes, meet Huna Prabhu, who is one of the organizers, and he uh suggested this topic that i give class on this topic and i think this is really relevant especially during the lockdown and uh, pandemic and in general it's very interesting how these things uh, occur and what do we do about it Okay, so uh, uh, Maharaj, uh, should we start with some small kirtan and then we proceed to the lecture? Okay, yeah, I'm not sure how the kirtan works. I guess <clears throat> we could do so with our uh, microphones muted. Yes, yes. Everybody's right. muted now. Okay. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Vaminite Namile Namaste Saraswati Devi Guravani Prachadine Yirvishesha Sundabadi Pashtetya desha tarine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Tacharinehe Nibhishesha Shunavadi Pashtetya desha tarine Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Dada Dada Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Penda Daya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Advaita Gadada Shivasa di Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय राधा गोविंद राधा गोविंद राधे राम गोविंद राधा जय राध गोविंद राध गोविंद राधे राध गोविंद राध गोविंद जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारे आदर गोपी जन बल्लभ गिरीवर खाधे गोपी जन बल्लभ गिरीवर खा सदनंदन ब्रज नंदन कुंज बिहारे कुंज बिहारे राधा माधव कुंज बिहारे जय प्रभु परा प्रभु परा प्रभु परा जय प्रभु परा 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 जय प्रभु परा जय जय प्रभु परा श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन याज्ञ की जाए सब प्रोपाद की जाए श्री श्री राध गोविंद की जाए समवेता भक्त वृंद की जाए ओम गौरी समी निताय को प्रेम नंदे so i'm not sure how good is my connection it's it looks connection. like it's little uh, uh, stable it's unstable now maybe it uh, will clear up soon okay yeah but uh you can hear me well or, yes or right now? now yes yes okay okay all right so i was thinking that um, the topic of frustration saturation and boredom is very interesting one uh because right now i'm in russia and uh, those who know russia or of russian origin 
uh, understand what is FSB. This is secret Russian services standing for Federal Security Services or Bureau, whatever. And the frustration, saturation, and boredom, they fall into this acronym. And so I was thinking that this is secret Maya's service to test our determination in Krishna consciousness. And uh, of course, these things are very real and they can be very bothersome, especially if we face these difficulties in Krishna consciousness. But uh, actually, there is one um, text from Bhagavad Gita, which is very relevant to this topic, directly or indirectly. And that is text from chapter four, which is transcendental knowledge, text number 10. And we'll uh, have this text on the screen so that in case our internet connection is not stable, you will have at least uh, the text in front of you. And thank you all for joining. It's a big surprise. I can see Jayad Vaita Maharaj's uh, participation. He's also on the call. So my humble obeisances to Maharaj and to all of you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Happy to hear Hare you. Kumar. Thank you very much for joining us. It's great to have your association at least on Thank you for traveling all the way from Russia to New York. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj, for your jokes. They are always making my day. <laughs> so <clears throat> we'll start in a traditional way by offering our prayers and glorification to the Hari Guru and Vaishnavas. Krishna, saintly personalities, and spiritual masters. Magyanti Mirandasya Gyananjana Vishamakaya Chakshurham Militam Yana Tasmai Shri Guravenava Shri Chaitanya Manao Vishnam Stapitam Yena Pukale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Yati Svapadantikam Pancha Kalpatru Vyascha Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Pachitanam Pavane Pyavaish Nave Pyanamon Maha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gratha Shiva Sri Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Mahatrema, Prohobi Gurni, Marksheti, Mushapurusha, Muntegunan, Sadasa Sadasat Makail, and Krishish the Bhagavan, Bacham Seme Om Nama Bhagavate Vasu Devaya Om Nama Bhagavate Vasu Devaya Om Nama Bhagavate Vasu Devaya So we'll look at this verse on our screens. It's quite well known verse, Shil Prabhupada quoted quite a few times. Itaraga Baya Grotha Manmayama Mukashita Bahavo Gyana Tapasa Utama Bhavam Agataha. So the synonyms Vita freed from Raga attachment by a fear, Krodha and anger. Matmaya fully in me, Mam in me, 
Upashritaha, being fully situated, Bahava, many jnana of knowledge, Tapasa, by the penance, Utaha, being purified, Madhavam, transcendental love for me, Agataha, attained. Translation prepared by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Shala Prabhupada Kijay. Being freed from attachment, fear, and anger, being fully absorbed in me and taking refuge in me, many, many persons in the past became purified by knowledge of me, and thus they all attained transcendental love for me. As described above, Herbert, as described above, it is very difficult for a person who is too materially affected to understand the personal nature of the Supreme Absolute Truth. Generally, people who are attached to the bodily conception of life are so absorbed in materialism that it is almost impossible for them to understand how the Supreme can be a person. Such materialists cannot even imagine that there is a transcendental body which is imperishable, full of knowledge and eternally blissful. In the materialistic concept, the body is perishable, full of ignorance, and completely miserable. Therefore, people in general keep this same bodily idea in mind when they are informed of the personal form of the Lord. For such materialistic man, the form of the gigantic material manifestation is supreme. Consequently, they consider the supreme to be impersonal. And because they are too materially absorbed, the conception of retaining the personality after liberation from matter frightens them. When they are informed that spiritual life is also individual and personal, they become afraid of becoming persons again, and so they naturally prefer a kind of merger, merging into the impersonal void. Generally, they compare the living entities to the bubbles of the ocean, which merge into the ocean. That is the highest perfection of spiritual existence, attainable without individual personality. This is a kind of fearful stage of life, devoid of perfect knowledge of spiritual existence. Furthermore, there are many persons who cannot understand spiritual existence at all. Being embarrassed by so many theories and by contradictions of various types of philosophical speculation, they become disgusted or angry and foolishly conclude that there is no supreme cause and that everything is ultimately void. Such people are in a diseased condition of life. Some people are too materially attached and therefore do not give attention to spiritual life. Some of them want to merge into the supreme spiritual cause. And some of them disbelieve in everything, being angry at all sorts of spiritual speculation out of hopelessness. This last class of men take to the shelter of some kind of intoxication and their effective hallucinations are sometimes accepted as spiritual vision. One has to get rid of all three stages of material con consciousness, attachment to material life, fear of spiritual personal identity, and the conception of void that arises from frustration, frustration in life. To get free from these three stages, of the material concept of life, one has to take complete shelter of the Lord, guided by the bona fide spiritual master, and follow the disciplines and regulative principles of devotional life. The last stage of the devotional life is called bhava, or transcendental love of Godhead. According to Bhakti Rasam Vita Sindhu, the science of devotional service, Adaushi Adaushadadada Sadhu Sangha. Tabajana kriya tato, nartani vritisya tato nishtar chistata, ata satistado bavas tata prema, vidan chati sadakanam ayam premna, pradurbave bavet krama. In the beginning, one must have a preliminary desire for self realization. This will bring one to the stage of trying to associate with persons or spiritually elevated. In the next stage, one becomes initiated by an, a, an elevated spiritual master, and under his instruction, the neophyte devotee begins the process of devotional service. By execution of devotional service under the guidance of the spiritual master, one becomes free from all material attachments, attains steadiness in self-realization, and acquires a taste 
for hearing about the absolute personality of Godhead Sri Krishna. This taste leads one further forward to attachment for Krishna consciousness, which is matured in bhava for the preliminary stage of transcendental love of God. Real love for God is called prema, the highest perfectional stage of life. In the prema stage, there is constant engagement in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. So by the slow process of devotional service under the guidance of the bona fide spiritual master, one can attain the highest stage, being freed from all material attachment, from the fearfulness of one's individual spiritual personality and from the frustrations that result in void philosophy. Then one can ultimately attain to the abode of the Supreme Lord. Text one more time. Bitraga bhaya krotha manmaya mamo pashita bhavogya natapasa putamad bhavam agataha. Being freed from attachment, fear, and anger, being fully absorbed in me and taking refuge in me, many, many persons in the past became purified by knowledge of me, and thus they all attain transcendental love for me. So this is the verse, which at least for me is pretty closely connected to the topic of boredom, uh, frustration and saturation in spiritual life. And uh, it of course is happening because we are going through one of the stages in our spiritual development, which is mentioned in here as anartha nivriti. And uh, we are trying to get rid of so many blocks uh, on our path. And uh, some of these are described in this particular verse, Vita Raga uh, attachment, fear, and anger. And uh, we can understand that, for example, boredom. What is boredom? Boredom when we have nothing to do, right? And uh, how come that in Krishna consciousness we might have nothing to do? because uh, we're not engaged in service. And uh, therefore we are, you know, as Shah Prabhupada would say that idle mind is devil's workshop. And uh, it brings a lot of trouble because uh, if we are engaged by maya then our life is wasted in so many different useless ways and uh, there is only one solution to that and that is to become engaged in devotional service um, the difficulty though is that the way to become engaged in devotional service is through an activity which in itself seems to be boring. And I am referring to Japa, individual chanting on beats. It's very interesting, right? That um, Of course, prasadam is never boring, right? <laughs> We're always ecstatic when we take prasadam. This is the kind of taste which even neophyte acquires very quickly. Taste for prasadam. And uh, classes are, of course, entertaining our intelligence in many ways. And kirtan, because it has certain melody and rhythm. It is kind of entertaining for the mind, right? But when we come to Japa, 
it's very difficult to relate to the fact that we have to repeat over and over again the same three words, Hare Krishna, Rama, in different combinations, right? Because the whole Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare, is nothing but the repetition of the same three words. And it seems to be really boring. However, as we've mentioned, right, that we continue eating and we never get bored by eating, even though these are the same kind of products. I'm sure some of you have your favorite dishes and you're never bored of taking the same dishes because we have taste for that. But unfortunately, we don't have taste for japa. And of course, it's happening because of ignorance. And it's very interesting that 99% of all the troubles devotees are facing are happening only because they don't have faith in japa. Uh, because japa seems to be something which is kind of almost unnecessary activity or something, right? Something which hardly makes any sense. And yet, if we understand what is japa, you know, that some of you probably heard of that uh, series of books, Conversations with God, right? By one man, Neil Donald Walsh, who claims that he connected with God. Nobody knows. God knows who, whom he connected with. But anyway, he published uh, questions and answers, his conversations, and he became hugely popular over, all over the planet. And I was thinking, you know, what's the big deal? I mean, every single devotee has conversations with God every single day, and that is Japa right so it's really interesting i mean this is the opportunity for each and every one of us to have direct conversation with krishna right in the form of japa because if we are focused on uh, hearing chanting the holy name and listening to the holy holy name and uh, not getting distracted by anything else will be directly in touch with krishna right and we can actually converse with krishna and we can actually develop our relationship with krishna and krishna is the supreme personality of god and so if we're just mindful of this simple fact that japa is our direct conversation with god how exciting it is, right? And Srila Prabhupada was giving the meaning, he was explaining the meaning of the chanting, at least on one occasion, he was saying, my dear Lord, Krishna, or an energy of the Lord, Hare, Shemati Radharani, please engage me in your devotional service. So, and then the process becomes really simple because Krishna is our best friend, right? And uh, whatever problems we have, Krishna can easily solve them because all the problems are only in our mind, right? And so, Krishna is our advisor. Krishna is our guide. He is our provider. He is our protector. He is everything for us. And he is the most important person, personality in our lives. And the most important uh, method of developing our relationship with him is through Japa. And uh, I'm saying that from practical experience. I mean, 
as all of us, I have my big problems and big doubts and big frustrations and everything in spiritual life. But because I had, from the beginning, I had faith um, because I could see how Japa works. This is the main method I'm using for solving every single problem. <laughs> And the only thing I have to do is to increase my chanting, increase the numbers of rounds I'm chanting. And it's quite amazing that after a while, all these problems, they really vanish. But there is another difficulty in Krishna consciousness. And that is when we are getting benefits. Because Krishna consciousness does provide us with tons of benefits, right? That uh, the same Bhagavad Gita explains in the third chapter, how the process of yagya works. And for example, uh, japa is one type of yagya we're doing. And just today we have read with devotees in Russia, this verse for, the sun, for their Sunday feast which is chapter 3, text 10, Saha Yagya Prajasvishva Provacha Prajapati Anayana Prasavishyabam Eshavastvishta Kamadhuk. In the beginning of creation, the Lord of all creatures sent forth generations of men and demigods along with sacrifices for Vishnu and blessed them by saying, be thou happy by this Yagya sacrifice because its performance will bestow upon you everything desirable for living happily and human liberation. And so our chanting, and especially Japa chanting, individual chanting on beats, is also yagya, Japa yagya, right? And this process is giving all these things. And the more serious we are in this process, the more of those benefits we get, right? We can. Um, um, Flourish. Pravishyatvam means be more and more prosperous. So we can prosper. And uh, all our desires, Kamadhuk, all our desires become fulfilled. And of course, that makes us very happy. And then in the end, we can attain liberation as well. But uh, before we attain liberation, these could be the traps on our spiritual path that, you know, boredom is really interesting phenomenon, right? And I think this boredom is the problem of wealthy people, right? Those who have too many things in life because poor people, they have no time to be bored right? <laughs> They're too busy with their survival. And it's only problem of, you know, prosperous people, wealthy people, because, you know, they have every single type of sense gratification in their hand. And they, you know, burn themselves out with this sense grat. And at the end, they become really bored. Because they focus on sense gratification, right? And even though we are focused on devotional service, but as a result of devotional service, you know, just to encourage us, just to make us happy, Krishna fulfills all types of our material desires as well. And here is the danger that we might, you know, inadvertently shift to sense gratification in Krishna consciousness, right? and think, okay, I've done my service, I got my salary from Krishna, and now I can enjoy. And then we become bored because our service stops. And service is that what gives us, you know, meaning, inspiration, um, and everything else. 
And this is the problem that we become, you know, that success also has its traps. And uh, this is where the boredom comes. And when we become bored and uh, when we kind of retire in our own you know, minds from doing active services, thinking, okay, I have done enough and now you know, I can relax. This is when the Maya catches us. And then uh, I'm preaching to myself <laughs> also. And uh, then we start thinking, okay, I've done my part. And now, you know, all the other younger devotees or junior devotees, let them do the service. Uh, let them prove themselves to Krishna. I've already done that. And uh, then we, instead of, you know, doing our service, we start um, looking at other devotees' services and start finding faults with them, right? But if we don't have the position of an authority or spiritual master, then devotees don't really, you know, care about our opinions. And then we become frustrated. So basically pride is something which makes us frustrated. And there is very interesting uh, episode in Bhagavatam that there was one of the greatest progenitors called Daksha, right? And he was performing his yagya and he invited all the chief personalities in the universe to attend his yagya. And Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, they were all there at the process. And when Daksha entered the sacrificial arena, everything stood up uh, except Lord Brahma, who of course is the chief of all the demigods. He didn't have to stand up for Daksha, but Lord Shiva haven't got up as well. Well, Lord Shiva is also one of the ruling personalities in the universe, right? He actually is the father of all living entities because um, Brahma Samhita explains that Lord Shiva is the personifi personified glance of Lord Vishnu, which is entering into the material creation and brings with him all the living entities. And so Lord Shiva is impregnating um, the material nature with all the living entities. So in one sense, Lord Shiva is the father of all living entities in the material world. And so uh, Lord Shiva, of course, is one of the Guna avatars in charge of the mode of ignorance. So he's really special personality. He didn't have to stand up for Daksha, but because Lord Shiva was married to Daksha's daughter, uh, Sati, um, and he was effectively son-in-law of Daksha, Daksha expected Lord Shiva to stand up for him. And Lord Shiva hasn't, not because he wanted to irritate Daksha, but because he was absorbed in thinking of Krishna. He was absorbed in his meditation. He, haven't, he hasn't noticed Daksha. And Daksha started severely criticizing Lord Shiva for not respecting him, right? And he actually cursed Lord Shiva and he said he will not get, get his uh, share 
of sacrificial uh, offerings. And Lord Shiva didn't uh, object to that. He just stood up and left. He didn't care about Daksha's uh, materialistic views or his criticism because he was above it. But then uh, Daksha became so angry. But when his, uh, do his daughter uh, wanted to go and see her family members, you know, her para uh, parental, I mean, yeah, uh, his father and mother and his sisters. And uh, she came there and Daksha gave her cold shoulder because she was connected to Lord Shiva and uh, um, Daksha was still angry with Lord Shiva. And effectively, Sati became so frustrated because of her father's offensive attitude towards Lord Shiva that she self-immolated. Uh, she immolated herself. She burned herself up by the yogic powers, by the yogic fire. And when Sati committed this suicide out of protest for Lord Shiva's uh, for uh, Daksha offending Lord Shiva, then uh, Lord Shiva could not tolerate that. And he came and he ruined the whole sacrifice of Daksha. He sent this ferocious demon who destroyed the whole sacrifice. And uh, yeah, Daksha got his reactions that his, actually his head got chopped off and the goat's head was fixed instead of his original head. And then he became humble. And then he humbled himself in front of Lord Shiva, etc. Got forgiveness, very interesting story from Bhagavatam. But uh, it's very instructive for us because, I mean, Daksha is also a devotee. And it's very interesting to see how brilliant the prayers uh, Daksha offered in Bhagavatam but then we can see that due to his position and his achievements in Krishna consciousness, he became so proud that he became frustrate, frustrated uh, and irritated just, you know, because someone haven't paid him enough respect. So pride comes before the fall. And so, yeah, frustration comes because we have expectations beyond the, beyond the, what we should be expecting. We can say, you know, too high expectations. And that is frustration. And so, of course, saturation is another thing, uh, we feel saturated in Krishna consciousness um, because we are not getting what we want, right? And so uh, if we're focused, because service brings love, right? And love, you can never get saturated by love, of course. We're not talking about material lust. We're talking about real love. And love brings so much pleasure, so much joy, so much happiness. And can we get saturated by happiness? It can never happen, right? But if we are focused on our sense gratification, then of course, when we are not getting what we expect, then we feel saturated, we feel okay. Uh, it's kind of same thing, actually. Uh, so frustration, saturation. <laughs> Just frustration may be expressed in more negative way, right? But saturation could make one depressed or something like that. 
but it's the same thing. I mean, all these troubles, they have the only solution, which is to be always engaged in devotional service one way or the other. And there are unlimited ways to be engaged. And the key to the door of the treasure house of engagement uh, in devotional service is Japa. And so uh, this is the key point. In Russia, we have interesting proverb, which says that um, there is a single solution to every single trouble one solution to all the troubles and in krishna consciousness we can face unlimited troubles and there is only one solution and it is japa and uh, if you apply this solution and if it will not work for you no matter how much you chant you can come back to me with a complaint and you can have your money back. So it's my 108% guarantee that this is the solution which works always. And we have wonderful devotees here like Jayadvaita Maharaj and Prangavinda Prabhu and many others who have very long experience and uh, they could share their realizations with Japa and they could also say if they agree that japa is the universal solution to every single problem uh, we have in krishna consciousness and if we have problems with japa it's only because we are not chanting well enough and moreover we're not chanting uh, enough japa we're not you know like 16 rounds is basically enough to kind of uh you know taking the the analogy of us drowning in the material in the ocean of material existence and 16 rounds means we got you know, just our, our nose just a little bit above the water, right? And so we can uh, get drowned <laughs> if we're limiting ourselves by 16 rounds. That's why Prabhupada would say that don't waste chat, don't waste time. If you have time, chant Hare Krishna. So you can see that serious devotees, they're always finding, you know, everything every spare minute they always have their beats with them and they always chant as much japa as they can feed within the day because they know this is this is the safety rope right um i was thinking of the um story Bhakti Siddhartha Saraswati was telling about the man who fell into the blind well and the other man came to him and he said I'll rescue you and he threw a rope inside of the well and he said just grab hold of the rope and I'll pull you out of course the the other guy was saying how do I grab hold of the rope you can come down and help me to grab hold of the rope. But the man said, I cannot come down. You have to take care of yourself. That You have to do your part to be safe. And so if we grab hold of the rope, if we are in the well, technically speaking, we are safe. And I was thinking, is there a literal rope we should grab hold of so that Guru Krishna and Vaishnavas could pull us out of our you know, dry well of material conditioned life. And I came to a conclusion that yes, there is a rope and here is the rope we should grab hold of for life, right? So that's our lifeline. And 
if we just do that simple thing, then Guru Krishna and Vaishnavas can pull us out, out of any trouble, absolutely guaranteed. And um, yeah, that's what I wanted to share. I can see that some devotees already have questions, but uh, I wanted to also ask our senior Vaishnavas, of course, starting with Jayadavita Maharaj, uh, if you could please contribute a little bit to the topic. Um, maybe you could uh, either add or subtract or correct uh, whatever. Uh, I've mentioned what would be very interesting to hear. Gopal well, says, oh, hope. That's good. Yeah. There's, Please. of course, our our life is is coming from the holy name of Krishna, and that holy name is not different from Krishna, which is like. Um, what should we say? Such an, a profound good fortune for us that as soon as we're chanting the holy name, whether Japa, Kirtan, then immediately Krishna's, we're in touch with Krishna. So that it's such a, a, a good fortune for us. So what you said is, is true, always to be chanting. And then, of course, the other thing is um, quality and chanting. So those two instructions were there to chant at least 16 rounds a day, and then to avoid 10 kinds of offenses. That's the other side of it, because otherwise, if we, uh, yeah, if we don't, if we neglect, if we're not attentive about that, then we'll chant, but we won't get the the, ben the full benefit that we're looking for. So, uh, in one sense, that's the 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 japa challenge, or the yeah the challenge in chanting the holy name is to to chant without offenses, and especially without the offense of inattentiveness, which Shri Bhaktivinoda uh, Thakur says that's the root of all the offenses. So how to how to give attention to the holy name? How to fix our mind on the the holy name? That's our our uh, what would you say? That's that's our challenge, or that's the battlefield, or that's that's the place where we need to to focus so that we'll get the full effect of, of chanting. Um, Yes. There's just one more thing that I wanted to add, just because I'm so delighted to have come upon it um, a couple of days ago from the last year's or 2019's uh, Japa retreat that Burijan Prabhu and others were um, holding. Someone asked, is, is it uh, better to chant with the, the tape of Srila Prabhupada? Um, and Yadubara Prabhu was there, and he recounted an, an incident that in 1972, one of our god sisters, Aditya Dasi, was in Dallas, and Prabhupada was there. And the, the tape had just come out, this tape of Prabhupada chanting Japa. And she was very excited about it. And she met Prabhupada and said, she, she said to Prabhupada that um, Prabhupada, I'm chanting, uh, this tape is so nice, we're chanting and we're, um, and Prabhupada said, that is not good. He said, you should hear yourself chant. So I, I know that it's like a, a ritual in many temples to you know turn on the tape and chant, and I've always found that difficult because I 
my mind is where is my mind supposed to be? Uh, so after so many years of being uh, frustrated, I finally heard that that story from Yadavar Prabhu. So I was very happy that Prabhupada was not uh, endorsing this, but rather he said, "Oh, that is not good. You should hear yourself, chant." Very interesting. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for sharing because I was also thinking about it. It's a kind of, you know, uh, so such a widespread ritual, so many mm -hmm. devotees are following. And so, yeah, it is true. We should hear our own holy name, chanting uh, the holy names rather than, I mean, it's good to hear Prabhupada, but we have to practice. Thank you, Maharaj, for sharing. Thank you, Maharaj. And Hare Krishna. And just a uh, uh, few days ago, I heard, I, I saw the video clip of um, Jayadvaita Maharaj and so many other um, devotees when they were so young and they were at one very famous uh, TV show and preaching very enthusiastically. I remember how Jayadvaita Maharaj enthusiastically was preaching there. And we can see that so many years later, nearly 50 years later, that Maharaj has same unfading enthusiasm. And so he knows all the secrets, how to stay infused in Krishna consciousness. And uh, it's a great fortune for all of us to have association with such a generals in uh, Prabhupada's movement. And um, I also had my realization about uh, the inattentive chanting. It's really easy to chant 16 inattentive rounds. And I've done that so many times. But uh, when I try to chant 64 rounds, it's much harder to chant 64 and attentive rounds, you know, because 16 rounds, the mind kind of sees the end of it. You know, it's just one and a half hours, maximum two hours. Then I can do so many other things. So the mind can think of all those things I'll be doing in two hours. But if you chant at least 64 rounds, the mind doesn't see any end of it and he surrenders. And uh, that's my little realization how to chant attentively chant you know serious amount of rounds and lockdown is a great opportunity to give more time to japa actually it's in it's kind of our fortune in disguise all right so Thank you. And uh, maybe Prangavinda Prabhu could say a few words. It's very good uh, to see him joining us this afternoon. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Prabhu, good to see you. Good to see you Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances, all goes to Prabhupada. I don't we know are, how to Sripad Jayadeta Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. This is my spiritual men mentor eternally, I would say. Uh, I appreciate Maharaj's blessing always. Um, and I feel very honored to be in his presence. You all already said so many things I came to hear. I just didn't know. But since you're asking, I'll say something that uh, I learned from our Sanna seminar, Bhakti Vigyan Maharaj was mentioning a very interesting thing I never thought. Maharaj said that, uh, why do we keep on chanting? One name destroy the scene, full reaction, another name give Krishna Prem, that's enough. Or after some perfection, can we stop or we have to keep on going? So Maharaj said in Vedanta Sutra, he found, because of our fallen condition, yes, once uh, one name is enough, but our perception through the consciousness 
uh, dirty consciousness or contaminated consciousness will not be able to see it or act on it. Because our consciousness is impure, although process is pure, it's perfect, but it is not effective. So we have to keep on repeating and repeating and repeating under Guru's guidance. Then, yes, one day by the mercy of Guru Krishna and my endeavor, that it will connect in a pure state and pure holy name. So it is necessary. And also um, recently I was reading Bhaktivinoda Thakur Harinam Chintamuni. I'm doing a little seminar. He says that the I'm paraphrasing the attitude that each chanter holds will decide our real progress. Our real design of life, our fulfillment comes always from the inner side. If one can catch up that thread, then he can go and get things that higher, spiritual quality. We may appreciate beautiful figure of Krishna's in a style movement, intellectual delivery of the spiritual master. So many other things may be appreciable, but what should be the highest focal point of our realization? What should be our highest aim for which we will eliminate everything else? So he said, constant contemplation has to be there. Progress means elimination and acceptance. Our spiritual life must always be dynamic things. Because Krishna is dynamic, spiritual world is dynamic. Otherwise, we shall be dead. <laughs> so he says progress means acceptance and elimination. Um, I don't want to take much of your time, but very interestingly, I just found, uh, I always thought about what is pure name? We hear so much about Nama Parad, you know, 10 offenses, six offenses against Vaishnava within 10 offenses. So much details. Actually, Harinam Chintamuni majority is all about offenses. But there is a few key points Bhaktivinoda Thakur gives. What is pure name? So I, I'll just share one or two. It's very sweet. He said, um, what's that verse? Sadguru Kripai se anartha bina, uh, Sadguru Kripai se anartha binas, bhajite bhajite suddha namera prakash. One has to have a guidance always before take the job of mala on his hand. Must think of the lotus feet of Guru, Sadhu, who is giving the protection, uh, shelter, ashray. So thinking of uh, Guru, then uh, they, uh, taking shelter of Guru doesn't mean is a figure, is a actually the gap. So with that Sambandha Gyan, who am I, who is Krishna, what is this material nature, and what is their inner relationship, when that Sambandha Gyan actually, by the mercy of Guru and Vaishnava, reveals in the heart, with that Sambandha Gyan chanting will produce actually pure name. This was one. Another one was given uh, in chapter five. Somebody can look at it. Very beautiful, those Harinam uh, Chintamanis. <laughs> He says, Arayek Kathache Daitan Nivartane, Vishnu Nam, Vishnu Rup, Vishnu Guna Gane. That uh, chanting and hearing of the Mukhanam, principal name, is devoid of three things Namabhas, Aparad, and Vevadan. Vevadan means not having strong faith that name and the possessor of the name are one. The Krishna is every, uh, uh, Krishna is the Bhagavan, possessor of all six opulences. But when you think of holy name, the focus is not there that the holy name is Krishna. They're actually identical, same. Holy name is, has a beauty, has a opulences, all power, everything like Krishna, not like Krishna, it is Krishna. So that's difficult, difficult. And I can reflect within me also. 
So he said, when devoid of these three, then it is pure. So I, I come to resolution to myself that we have to keep on chanting, but we also have to hear the philosophy to understand and uh, the samandha again and remove this nama bhas, nama parad, and this bevoda. Thank you, Maharaj. I'm sorry. Thank you. Took so much of your time. Thank you. Yes, hearing the philosophy from devotees like Bhaktivinoda Thakur means associating with them. And mm -hmm. association with such devotees is definitely very important for our spiritual advancement. Thank you. By the way, Maharaj, your class is very wonderful. I really appreciate that a lot. It was very Thanks. appealing, uh, connecting to my status where I am. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Okay, so if anyone has any questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, <laughs> you're welcome to share. I hope our connection is still uh, tolerable. Maharaj, if you uh, allow me, I can. I want to ask you a question. Uh, I found out that uh, the inspiration is the kind of key for me to be inspired to chant uh, attentive rounds and chant more rounds. Uh, like I, I, I have this inspiration from the association with the Vaishnavas and CMD senior devotees. Like very recently, I um, found out about the uh, this meeting of senior devotees in Russia. Like Bhaktivedanta Swami, you you were in charge, and there were like six, seven, or eight Vaishnavas, senior Vaishnavas, that were. Uh, you know, uh, sharing their realizations about different topics. And it was like a, a link for me for, for real-time inspiration and for real-time way out, out of this, you know, difficult situation, what we all are now. So would you say that uh, that inspiration of senior Vaish Vaishnavas should be in America or in English language as well? And it will help devotees to, you know, to to find the way out of this lockdown because we have our spiritual lockdown as well right now because our association uh, are limited not right now because we are limited to the online association, most of us. And we cannot um, like, you know, see each other in temple or we have just in Radha Govinda Mani, we have uh, um, the uh, only you know, limited, limited frame of time for uh, darshan, you know. So would you say that uh, our senior devotees, like uh, Srila Prabhupada disciples, could help us as well, you know, to find this uh, real-time link for way out to, from the lockdown? Like, you know, those sanghas of senior devotees, and they are sharing that they all have problems as well as our, we have, you know, and they share their understanding of the situation. Like, you know, three, four, five Vaishnavas, senior Vaishnavas, they help us to get this inspiration for our, you know, for our growth in spiritual life. Could you comment on that? If it's Sure, yeah. I think uh, like at least Russian devotees are so inspired when they see, you know, all the leaders coming together and discussing the same topic. So if that would be happening uh, more and uh, in, you know, like our Western leaders would also come together. That would be wonderful, I think. Thank you, Maharaj. Sorry, I, th I think my connection is unstable again. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can, we can, Maharaj. That's okay. Yeah, I think it would be a great idea to get more senior devotees together discussing the same topic. Would be great inspiration for devotees. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank Dear you. devotees, uh, maybe someone want to ask Maharaj uh, the question. If, uh, if not, then we can round up our 
our discussion. So anyone want to, to share the realization or ask a question? Uh, I've seen the raised hand of one devotee, but I don't see her now. I don't know. Uh, she, yeah. she wanted to ask something, or she just. I don't see her now. She left, probably. Yeah, I think she dropped out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, thank you so much, Maharaj, uh, for your association, for your lecture. It's all always inspiring for all of us. Thank you, Jai Dwight Maharaj and Prangovinda Prabhu. Thank you for your uh, comments and realization. It, it helps us all. We have this mini lecture of uh, senior devotees. So we already have what we, what we need, the inspiration of senior devotees. Thank you so much. Um, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you all. All the best with your services and even though it's a very difficult time and with your spiritual practices, which you can increase in this situation and please take the opportunity for doing that. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Very good. Thank you.